All right, it is October, the leaves are changing, the weather is getting cooler, it is now hoodie season, which is awesome. I love it when the weather changes like this, and Lightroom just came out with a new update that's got some really freaking cool tools. So if you haven't updated, we are on Lightroom version 12.0, and if you had some exporting trouble, I did a video last Wednesday for how to fix that, so I will link it in the description. But let's get into the video, shall we? Will Simpson here and welcome back to the channel. Always good to see you. Uh, Lightroom just came out with an update with some cool features in the masking and content aware, like removing items in the images. So today we're gonna go through them. Now, these are pretty cool, but I'm just gonna kind of show you what they do and we're actually gonna put them through a little bit of a test because I notice a lot of, a lot of people, they always use like high contrast images so it's really easy for the selection tools to pick it up. So we're gonna use a little bit of, uh, we're gonna mix it up, use a little bit of harder images here and see how these tools play out. So let's uh, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you might notice, uh, over here the menu items are a little different. This is your editing panel, this is your crop tool, this is your content aware stuff, red eye detection, and your masks. Now when, before, when you clicked the mask or any of these buttons, you would get a done button here. So when you were done, you would close it and it would go back to the menu. Now, in order to get back to the menu, you have to come over to the editing and click this this actually icon. I don't really care for that too much, but I guess I'll just get used to it. It's not that big of a deal. Anyways, the biggest changes are the masking features. So let's click masks and you'll see some new updates. You see subject, which we've had, sky, which we've had, and now there's a new background, which this one, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. This one is so good because you, has to, you used to have to like select subject, then make your little subtraction and addition tweaks if it wasn't a perfect mask, and then you had to duplicate and invert. Now you can just simply click background, which is freaking awesome. And you'll notice down here, there is people, which is super cool. Now you can actually, it, it uses this AI software or whatever that Lightroom is doing now, and it detects people in the image. So if you click this here, it will detect the image, it'll create the mask, and this did a pretty pretty good job, and then it'll also give you face skin, body skin, eyebrows, lips, hair, and the entire person. Now, if you have entire person selected, you can't select these individually, but you can select these multiple ones if you'd like and it does a really good job. Like this is this is impressive because like portraiture and stuff, this is gonna be really, really cool. But let's, let's, we're getting way ahead of ourselves now, so let's cancel this. Let's do select subject, just simply. This is kind of a, a blended image, like there's not a high contrast between the sky and her shirt, and like the colors are similar, so let's see if it works. So let's press subject, and we'll notice that uh, this mask likes this boulder. <laughs> I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. <laughs> So we could simply just subtract and go to brush and then get rid of the boulder. But okay, fine, we don't wanna do that. So let's delete that. Let's do select background. It still didn't select this boulder. So I like that boulder. We would have to add that. Now one thing I did notice, if you do the mask, let's get rid of this. Da, da, da. Um, if you selected this select person thing, it did a great job. It selected the person without doing the boulder. So that's interesting to me. Like if the select subject doesn't, it selects the boulder and the background doesn't select the boulder, but the select person selects it per perfectly. So fine, whatever, there's workarounds. So then you can press create mask. Now here's, a, here's an interesting thing. It, let's say we select face select and body skin and eyebrows, right? You can see it kind of selected what it needed. But if we create a mask, it also allows us to create three separate masks. So we click that, press create mask. Now we have three individual masks here. Now an interesting thing, you'll notice that this labeled it person one face skin, mask two, person one body skin. Personally, I wish it would have relabeled instead of person one body skin, instead of mask two, put body skin or something like that. And that might come with the update. You can always rename it yourself by double clicking or clicking on the three dots and clicking rename, but it would be nice to automatically label that since it's already something you're selecting. So that would be kind of cool. All right, let's delete all of these masks. So let's go here and delete 
all mask. But you notice it pretty much looks about the same with regards to the masking. So let's go to the next image here and check out how it works with three, four people. Now this image obviously doesn't, isn't very contrasty, like the colors are very similar, kind of a muted tones and earthy tones. So let's see, so it says, okay, all people, good, that's a pretty good mask. Person one, good, that's pretty good. Person two, it means person two as in two people. <laughs> no, so it, so this is where it kind of errors. It thinks these are the two people in the middle are two people and person three, it does a pretty good job. It's not perfect, but again, it's not, I don't, I don't expect it to be perfect. And realistically, we're using images that are a little bit difficult, but all your images, not all of them are going to be cut and dry, high contrast, easy to mask. This thing does a very, very good job. But let's go ahead and select the background, see what happens. Did a beautiful job. Okay, let's delete that. Let's do, how about we do a select subject? This probably will select everybody. Good, yep, it did that, perfect. Good, um, okay, good. So you can, so that's pretty good. That's not bad with the selections. Let's move on to the next one. And that is going to be objects. Now this is pretty cool. So objects allows you to select the objects, right? Now there's two options. You have a brush tool and then you have a rectangle tool. So the brush tool allows you to, let's zoom in using command uh, plus, and let's make the brush a little smaller and let's just paint over this house and see if that works. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. You'll notice right here, it, it has a little bit extra there, which you could just easily subtract. So let's undo that and let's use the square. So here and draw a square around it and see what happens. Oh, that, that did a better job. Look at that. It didn't pick up that spot, which it did with the brush. That's not bad. Okay. All right. I, that's pretty good actually. Okay, good. Now let's say you wanted to add something. Let's say you wanted to add this. So you go to the mask and again, you use the add and object, uh, use the square here and we'll just draw a square over this. See if it works. Not too bad. That's a reflection. So expect some, some errors, but yeah, so it added this whole section here, but overall not too shabby. I am pretty impressed with that. Okay, let's go ahead and delete that mask. Let's delete it all together. Let's go to the next image of this plane. Now this one here, we should be able to just select it. Let's see what happens if we select subject. No subject detected. Okay, let's use object and let's use a brush and let's just kind of paint over that. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> so this is one of those high contrast, like easily, to, easily figured out situations, but it did a very, very good job figuring it out. Welcome to Photoshop. I mean, <laughs> I mean Lightroom. <laughs> that pretty much covers all the new updates on masking. Basically, they just made it a little bit easier to select your items and to really fine tune everything, which is awesome. It works really good. There's honestly, it's just going to get better and better from here. So I'm pretty impressed with these updates. Now they did come out with something else and that is the content aware fill. Thank goodness they came out with this because I, I really don't like the, the current whatever you call it, the healing brush that they have. It drives me crazy. It, it only works on small things for me and it's just, it's not, it's not great. Honestly, I go into Photoshop for, for pretty much all of my aware content aware fills and adjustments and cleanup, unless it's really small. So let's see how this works. Um, let's go to this image and you know what? Why is this guy holding his frozen yogurt in the street? Let's remove it, shall we? <laughs> okay, we're gonna go to content aware. And we're just going to drag over this whole thing. Now this might be a little aggressive, might be a little bit uh, intense, but let's see what happens. It analyzes it. That's not too bad. As far as AI and removal tool, that is not too bad. Now you can do a couple of things. You can press command, which on a Mac, it's probably control on a PC and click. So if I press command, I can draw, let's say over here, a box, and this is where I want it to fill the selection. So then like if you have some texture or something or a better matching point, you can do this to, to match it up, to help it remove the item. The other thing is you can refresh and it will reanalyze. So it'll take a new selection and try and match it a little bit better. 
and then you can adjust the size, you can adjust the opacity. So let's say you want to just kind of fade, that's kind of cool. So that could be a cool editing effect that you could work in there. But overall, it's not bad. Overall, I mean, for something like this, I would go into Photoshop and correct it, but at least it's, it's workable, you know? So that's good. And you can always use the healing brush or the clone stamp, things like that. Good, all right, let's go to the next image. And uh, one thing that I absolutely hate, it drives me crazy, is when I'm taking pictures of like cities or parks or something, there's always trash cans. I mean, I, I, would, I can't tell you how many times I've edited out a freaking trash can. <laughs> all right, so let's zoom in here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, zoom in. And we wanna remove this trash can, so content aware fill, make the brush a little bit smaller. Just paint over this trash can and see what happens. Uh, up the opacity, not bad. I mean, again, I would take this into Photoshop and fix it, but that's, it's, okay, that's not really workable. <laughs> I would definitely do it in Photoshop, that doesn't work at all. But you get the idea. Simple stuff, I mean, like this tree little sign here, I'm sure we could do it there. Beautiful, and maybe even this one. Not bad, okay, let's, let's, let's do command and take the selection here, see what happens. There we go. Okay, good. So that worked out really, really good. So there is more new tools that work really, really well. And this update has definitely made things a little bit easier to fine tune. Let's do one more here. We're gonna do a portrait because I really wanna kind of see, oops. I really wanna kind of see how this masking works. Let's go into editing. Let's, let's zoom out here and let's go to mask and let's go to detecting people. And we are going to click person. Beautiful, so it's detecting the person. Okay, good, so now let's try the face skin. Okay, not bad. Let's try the body skin, not bad. Eyebrows, looks weird, but not bad. <laughs> eye, eye, eye sclera, it's the whites of the eyes. Let's zoom in here and see how that looks. Not bad. Iris and pupil, not bad. Lips, not bad, and hair. So overall, that's that's pretty freaking awesome. Like you could definitely get more and more customized with this. And we can do one more. Let's see what happens when I select subject with this. Nice. <laughs> so it works on animals too. Anyways, that is kind of an overview of the new updates with Lightroom. Again, this is not like a kind of a how to use. This is just a kind of an overview because in the end, it's gonna be you playing with them and really fine tuning them and seeing how they work for your images specifically. This is definitely an upgrade. This is definitely an upgrade from the previous Lightroom. And so if this was helpful, kind of got you a little bit oriented, go ahead and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We're shooting for 10,000 by the end of this year, so it'll be greatly appreciated. And if you have any questions, you know where the comment section is, as well as I'm coming out with some amazing new courses soon, so stay tuned for that. Bunch of cool stuff in the description, so go check that out, and I will see you guys next week. Later.